Today I'm taking a look at a Linux distribution I've never actually heard of before today. That Linux distribution is Modisha OS, Modisha all caps, interesting name. This is a Debian stable based Linux distribution and it is designed specifically for multimedia users. It's uh, basically for multimedia professionals. It's for people that work with graphics design, music creation, video creation, video editing. It also comes with an office suite for those of you that are creative and those sorts of avenues. What's interesting is the fact that I've never heard of this until until I saw the release announcement over on DistroWatch. But according to their website, Modisha OS, it says since 1998. So apparently this Linux distribution has been around in some form or fashion since 1998. Uh, I guess it's been under the radar, at least in terms of my awareness of it. So what makes this Linux distribution unique? Uh, what separates this from just your standard Debian stable? Well, they give uh, some bullet points here. It says turbo boost processors are enabled by default. Swappiness is reduced to 10% and programs are 25% faster. So they've done a lot of optimization as far as speed. And they mentioned data in RAM memory is compressed with read and write speeds above 20%. They also use a jack audio connection kit. R-Sync, they're already configured and active. They mentioned that uh, your app store, everything is in the deb format. So I guess, you know, we're not doing dealing with flat packs or, you know, any other uh, of those kind of containerized formats. It's all just strictly deb packages from the Debian repos. And they also mentioned uh, using Windows programs that Wine HQ is already installed. They also mentioned unlimited cloud space. That's interesting. I'm not exactly sure why I need that or why I want that. I guess for multimedia professionals, especially if you're storing a lot of audio files or video files, that is an interesting feature. And then they also mentioned bug for bug binary compatibility with Debian, which makes sense. It is based on Debian after all. So let me go ahead and download the ISO and I'm going to run through a quick installation and first look of Modisha OS inside a virtual machine. So I've gone ahead and I've downloaded the ISO. The ISO was rather large in size. It was almost five gigabytes in size, but it makes sense. It's a multimedia distribution that comes with a lot of multimedia programs already installed out of the box. So the ISO is gonna be a large ISO. I do like the look and feel, you know, just here in the live environment. I love the wallpaper. Uh, they are using the Cinnamon desktop environment. I don't mind cinnamon. I like the plank dock. I'm assuming this is plank here at the bottom. Overall, you know, I, I like the look and feel of Modisha here. Uh, it's got this funky cold look and it's funky cold Modisha, right? <laughs> from like the, the rap song from the late 80s. You guys remember the rapper Tone Loke and funky cold Modisha? Uh, yeah, I just dated myself there. <laughs> probably most of you guys are, are probably wondering who the hell is Tone Loke? Uh, you guys should actually check out Tone Loke from the late 80s. He had a couple of really big hits. Funky Cold Medina was his biggest hit, but he also did a great rendition of Wild Thing. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, of course, that's way off topic. Well, I guess it's not way off topic because it is music and this is a multimedia distribution. So let's go ahead and run through a quick installation. So let me search for the installer here in the menu and install system, I'm assuming, would launch the installer. Yes, it does. Looks like they're using the Calamaris installer. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly run through the installation. It's already figured out my time zone, so no need to do anything. English US is my keyboard. No need to do anything there. I'm going to erase the disk and give Modisha OS the full virtual hard drive of this virtual machine. It's going to do uh, no swap by default. I want it to create a swap file though. I'm going to do extend 4 for the partition, although you could choose ButterFS. That's nice that they have the option. And then I'm going to click next and let's go ahead and create my user. My user is DT. What is the host name of this computer? I'm going to call it Modisha-VM and then Let's choose a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password. And then do we want to log in automatically without being asked for a password? No, that's dangerous for privacy reasons. And do we want to use the same password for the administrator account, for the sudo account? Yes, that way the DT user, his password and the sudo password are the same password. And then click next. We get our summary here and location, keyboard, partition scheme, everything looks good. I'm gonna click the install button and away we go. And typically this install, you know, it would probably take five to 10 minutes. That's typically how long these take on my machine. I'm gonna step away, grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Modisha OS has finished installing.
and the installation has completed. That installation process took uh, about 10 minutes or so. Now let me go ahead and reboot the machine. And I've rebooted and logged into our freshly installed Modisha OS. Let me quickly go through the menu system and see what is installed out of the box. So let's start with the accessories category. Now, most of this stuff is not going to be all that interesting because obviously it's mostly multimedia software, but you may want to play around with things like uh, the calculator or the uh, disk utility that's for uh, formatting drives, repartitioning drives and things like that. A lot of this is like standard GNOME applications, I would assume, like GNOME characters. You know, you can get your emojis or whatever. Uh, you know, nothing really terribly interesting in here. Let's actually jump into what we're here for, which is the multimedia applications. Let's start with the graphics category. So in here, we're going to have things like Inkscape and Krita. Let's actually open Krita here, see what version we're on, because this is based on Debian Stable. We should actually pay attention to the version numbers of the software because we could be on some older versions. Rita is actually taking a little while to launch here. There we go. And let's go to help and about Krita. And this is Krita 5.1.5. Now Krita, a really cool um, application to create images. I don't actually know too much about Krita. I don't think I've ever used it myself, but I hear good things about it for those of you that are, are into, uh, you know, creating your own works of art and everything. For me, I, I typically use GIMP. I do know many people that tell me that Krita is an even better tool than GIMP, but again, I don't know, so I can't really comment. Inkscape, I've played around a little bit with Inkscape in the past. This is Inkscape 1.2. Uh, this is for creating uh, like uh, scalable vector graphics, SVG graphics. I don't know too much about Inkscape, though. I've played around with it a little bit but just a little bit with it in the past but i would say both Krita and inkscape are definitely professional level tools as far as great free and open source software tools that certainly professional graphics artists certainly would use we've also got some photo tools as well we've got photo collage we've got raw therapy let's check out what version of raw therapy we're on here raw therapy also took a little while to launch i don't know uh, these are big programs though so maybe this is just their their normal startup time raw therapy is not a program that i ever really played with Looks like we are on version 5.9 of Raw Therapy. Getting back into the menu system, let's check out Internet. And we are using Google Chrome as our browser. It's interesting that they went with uh, some proprietary software, although it's not the only piece of proprietary software on the system. We also have Skype, which is proprietary. Telegram, which is proprietary. WhatsApp, which is proprietary. And a lot of proprietary stuff here. Let's check out Google Chrome here. So Google Chrome, it looks like it's going to launch uh, the Modisha Cloud Google site. I guess this is, I don't know, is this where we're getting our storage or this is just a search page here. It, they did mention though on the Modisha website that we would get cloud storage. I don't know if that is uh, something I can search for. Let's search for cloud. We've got online accounts. Uh, Google Next Cloud. Yeah, this is just connecting these accounts if we already have them. Getting back to the internet category, we have an email client. Geary is here, and I like Geary. Uh, we also have an FTP client, FileZilla as well. We have our Office category, and for Office, they are using only Office, the desktop edition. They also have Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably uh, 365. Yeah, it's going to open the, uh, well, you're going to have to log in, obviously, in the browser. Uh, I don't have an account, though. I've never used uh, Office 365, so I can't really do much with it. But only Office. Let's see what version of only Office we're on here. Let's go ahead and go into the uh, word processor. And there we go. Uh, it actually looks rather nice uh, as far as I, I do like uh the look and feel of this particular Office suite. For me, I've always been a uh, LibreOffice user, really since the beginning, since, you know, back in the day when it was open Office, then was forked and became LibreOffice. Maybe someday I'll actually play around with only Office. A lot of people tell me really good things about that as well. And then let's go to the video category, because this was one of the big things they touted on the website, is that this was for video makers. And we've got, actually, 
quite a bit of stuff here as far as video editors. Caden Live is the video editor that they have installed. Caden Live, definitely the best free and open source video player. I like it's you know, there's no doubt about that right there. There's nothing else that even comes close as far as free and open source software. And this is Caden Live 22.12.13. Also in the video category, we had Astro Fox. We had a Vitamux. <laughs> I don't know. That's a video editor as well. At least it, it told me that in the hint. Uh, what is this? A Vitamux 290. <laughs> I hope I pronounced that right. I don't know anything about this program. Uh, looks a little weird. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, also under video, we had Cheese, which is your webcam program. We have Handbrake, uh, which is for transcoding files. If OBS Studio is installed out of the box, that's nice. Natron is also here as well. Let's take a look at Natron. So this is for creating like uh, animations. Uh, I go to help and about Natron. Natron, this is an open source compositing software. So really cool uh, program. I don't know how to use Natron. It's one of those programs that for years I've told myself, you know, one day, you know, I'll actually figure out how to use that program, but I've never gotten around to it. For a video player, looks like they're shipping SM player 22.7.0. And then the final multimedia category we need to take a look at, of course, is audio. Audio, it looks like they ship Audacity, LMMS, um, all, all the Jack stuff, QJack, CTL, QSynth. We've got Rhythmbox as our audio player. We've got Sound Card Mixer, Sound Juicer. Sound Juicer is for uh, ripping audio from CDs. This used to be a standard program that was on most Linux distributions back when CDs were like normal. Now, CDs are not a normal thing, so nobody ships Sound Juicer anymore. Uh, but if you still have that need, and certainly because this is a multimedia distribution, it makes sense why they've included it on this. And then we've got a lot of things. Zen Add Sub FX. I don't know what that program is. Let's actually launch it. This is Zen Sub FX with the Jack server. Choose an interface. Oh, interesting. Oh, we've got Wobbly Windows on by default. I didn't mention that earlier. <laughs> as far as, you know, they do have that effect here enabled in the Cinnamon desktop environment. So quite a bit of multimedia stuff installed out of the box. Let's take a look, a very quick look under the hood, uh, because that's where, you know, a lot of the, the magic happens. Let's actually check what kernel version we're on. So if I do a uname dash R, we're on 6.12.30. Let's see how many packages are installed. So if I do a apt space list space dash I for installed and then pipe that into the word count program and give the word count program the dash L flag for a line count rather than a word count, this will tell me how many packages are installed via the apt package manager. Uh, it looks like 2,505 packages were installed via the apt package manager. For audio, let's check if Pipewire is installed. I would assume it would be. Yeah, the Pipewire binary is here. Let's check as well if Flatpak is installed. Uh, there is no Flatpak binary, so Flatpaks, uh, like the package for Flatpak, it's not here. So obviously no Flatpaks are installed either. And then finally, let's take a look at system resource usage with HTOP. We're using 1.18 gigs of the 6 gigs of RAM that I gave this VM. That is not unusual for, you know, the Cinnamon desktop environment. Plus, it's got a lot of stuff running in the background. I've opened a ton of programs here, so I probably should have ran that on a cold boot to get the, uh, the best uh, reading there. Let me go ahead and exit out of the terminal. One last thing I want to do, I want to right click on the desktop and let's go ahead and change desktop background. Does it come with any cool wallpapers other than what we see? Because this distribution said it's been around since 1998, I would assume that you know every time they had a release, they had some cool wallpapers. And just looking at the wallpaper pack, there is some cool stuff here. Like, uh, yeah, that's, not bad there. Uh, I don't love the wobbly windows. <laughs> I can probably turn that off. I mean, wobbly windows is cool. You know, it was cool, you know, back, you know, 15 years ago. But now, you know, I'm not, I, I turn off a lot of the fancy effects. That's not a bad wallpaper there as well. Yeah, I kind of like that. Well, let me make this a little smaller here. And we got some nice abstract art as well. Got to say, you know, the wallpaper pack that it ships with, is quite nice you know some really i really like that that's nice the bridge lit up over the uh the river there 
Really cool. This would look great against a dark theme, a dark GTK theme, which I have a dark GTK theme. I'd need the panel also to be dark. I'd probably change the dock to be dark just for that contrast. But yeah, I love that wallpaper. I might have to steal the wallpaper. Uh, yeah, some of these wallpapers, though, yeah, are, are just super cool. Yeah, and there's a great abstract art wallpaper. Yeah, matter of fact, that's going to be the one I go with. So there you have it, a quick look at the latest release of Modisha OS, Debian stable for content creators, for multimedia professionals. I got a lot of optimizations for speed and everything. I got to say, uh, for a distribution I'd never heard of, you know, my first impressions are that it's a well put together distribution, like everything as a purpose it seems to you know there seems to be a well thought out plan with it which is not the case with so many <laughs> Linux distributions now before I go I need to thank a few special people I need to thank the producers of this episode and I'm talking about Matt Steve 40 millimeter Cap K Mandara Lawful Lee Jersey Killer Mark Methos Arion Paul Peace Watch Fedora Realities for Less Red Profit Roland Warjin 2 and Ubuntu and Willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys this quick look at Modisha OS would not have been possible the show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen all these names you're seeing on the screen right now these are all my supporters over on patreon because i don't have any corporate sponsors i'm sponsored by you guys the community if you like my work and want to see more videos about linux and free and open source software like funky cold medisha subscribe to distrotube over on patreon peace guys